Well, welcome, welcome again to another exciting episode. This one, we're going to be diving in into why 2022 or even 23, especially in my opinion, housing market crash could be worse than 2008. I'm sharing a phenomenal article that I just found and it's under uh, investorplace.com. Again, I will share the link like I normally do um, in all my, um, I call it nutshell, uh, episodes that I'm trying to record less than 15 minutes or even 10 minutes. Um, because this is a thing is really important information for everyone out there that felt that um, they missed the boat. Um, I know there was a lot of FOMO going on out there. Uh, realtors, burgers, everybody was making lots of money. And uh, and sometimes I can be sarcastic because I, 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 I kept laughing when I saw these people going through that FOMO. Come on, buy, buy, buy. It doesn't matter. You know, overbid, overbid. And I kept putting my, pulling my hair and saying, oh, my gosh, these people, I feel bad for these people home buyers then going crazy this is not good here it is folks this is reality um i said this uh as soon as covid hit i remember um that it was not until late um that fall right around i remember september october 2020 when uh, i noticed the market was going up and up and up and up and it seemed like there was no sky to the limit you know and I could tell there was a repetition very similar to what happened back in 2008. And what people were arguing me and saying, no, it's not right, Liz, you're wrong. And I said, no, I'm not. Not because I'm always right, because I'm not. But in this case, I know I would feel very confident that I knew based on my research and the experience that I had previously, again, in all five, all the way through all seven, how everything skyrocketed. And I knew that was not normal back then neither. And then, of course, as you know, the history, uh, everything just crashed. Uh, and, you know, people are saying, well, what's the big differential? And and, and just to make it very simple, uh, you know what? Yes, in back in 08, 09, what really happened was, it's true, we used to have an old dirty joke. Yes, it was an old dirty joke that as long as you could uh, you know, breathe, then you were able to sign a piece of paper and say, sure, I take a no income verification loan and I can buy that $250,000 home for, you know, uh, a salary of under $30,000 a year. <laughs> so this was actually happening. Yes, things got a lot more tighter with home loans, mortgages and so on. And while that might make it better now in this second round that we're going through, uh, at least the most recent second round, because we have been going ups and downs and cycling in housing market for many, many years, for over 100 years. So this is nothing new. It goes up, goes down, and vice versa. Um, and I understand that maybe some of you who might be listening, your realtors, your brokers, you might be upset that I'm making this comment, but that is the truth. And if you've been long enough, and you just didn't jump in in the last only two years and be making a lot of money, this is the reality. Market goes up, goes down. That is the same thing with the stock market. And we're looking at the same scenario with people who have invested in crypto, which anyhow, that's a lot more of a high collateral, you know, and, and really uh, concerning uh, investment, just to say the least, right? Because at least we know the real estate has been around for, for you know, uh, hundreds of years. And it's always made a lot of very wealthy people in the same as the stock market. Some people disagree. Anyhow, so based on this article, and I want to kind of go over this, is it says that a host of new data offers further evidence of a housing market crash, Okay. Even they're seeing some figures shows the real estate market may be in the even worse shape than it was in 2008. Ouch. Okay. Now, here's the facts about this. What's happening is what over 30%, a 30-year fixed mortgage trending over 6% for the first time since 2008. That's been the highest 6%. And I'm going to, as I'm sharing this article, like I said, from um, investorplace.com, 
I'm going to go ahead and share the second screen. Hopefully you can see this, that I also came down with the mortgage loan rates right now. And uh, as of this video and this recording, I mean, right now, a 30-year fix is a 7.53. So it's beyond and higher than that 6% from the article. So just a year ago, for example, these rates, you can get a 30-year fixed rate for less than, you know, 5%. And some people were getting even 4%. Um, and then a 15-year fix right now, and you can see the Google Trend uh, chart below. Okay, as I'm sharing the screen, and once again, it's a 65 Okay, a 10 year six arm is a 6.69, 7.69, sorry. So as you can see, the rates are going so extremely high and still that requirement of 20% that it's not feasible. In other words, let me go back to this, the original article that we were sharing. And it says it right there. Based on the National Association of Realtors, it shows that July home sales fell nearly 20% year over year, okay? Furthermore, rent prices are up almost 30% from just last year. So while the prices have dropped 20% in some areas, um, I'm in the state of Florida, and yet we haven't seen, I think, that drastic drop in price, but it's because Florida, Texas, uh, you know, in certain states that had uh, even, you know, South Carolina that happened, Tennessee, uh, we had a part of, um, uh, goodness, uh, uh, it was, Ohio, I think it was Ohio. I know that uh, states that it was Arizona, Nevada, these were states in back in the old days again. And when I say the old days back in 2008, had the same scenario. It's just a repetition. And yes, it's a little bit uh, variation to it. Absolutely. I mean, right, nothing stays the same. We know that. But the reality of what I'm trying to discuss here, folks, is that even 20% in some areas already had dropped. But I know in Florida, maybe we have just had a drop of less than 7%. In the meantime, in the last two years prior, it went up by 20 and 45% in some areas especially in the West Coast. Um, and talking about that with this big hurricane that we just had recently, um, that's going to scare a lot of people away from the state of Florida. They thought that Florida was a paradise. Well, I'm sorry, guys. This is reality. And uh, there's no perfect climate. And uh, this is going to cause a lot, a lot of issues for people that came with a lot of big bucks because they're solo homes. Uh, you know, in, in, in other big states like New Jersey, New York, Chicago. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about for those who are listening to this and watching. And because you came with all those millions of dollars, you came here invested in Florida. You thought you got a bargain with the reality. The bargain in Florida is we have wonderful weather. It's true. Uh, definitely we don't have the harsh snow and, you know, the chill factors and all that. But there's a price to pay in Florida. And if you're not willing to pay that price at the rest of the Floridians, then this is not your place. It's time to go. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I'm going to see a lot of people moving out because they were under that false, um, you know, uh, illusion of thinking that Florida was true paradise. Well, folks, this is reality. We have to deal with this every single season between june and november every single year you have to have your hurricane bag i call it yeah that's your emergency kit you have to be prepared that sometimes we get devastated hurricanes like this reason one with ian and you know what ian and the fact is it's sad it's harsh for us it's stressful and i think that anybody who's in a certain age they really, all they want to do and they want to retire and just relax and not worry about, you know, packing and preparing their homes. Really, honestly, most of the state of Florida, you're going to be exposed to hurricanes. Anyhow, jumping back to this, and I wanted to discuss this because I've been living here for over 25 years. And I get this a lot from the most recent event, people complaining about why we get hurricanes and tornadoes and bad weather. Well, because it's not perfect. This is not a perfect climate. So again, this is a true fact of what's going on. And just going back again, not trying to go off track, but uh, it's just because I've been reading a lot on social media about all these things. We're looking at people 
that, I mean, just the home prices, look at this article, over $438,000, okay? An average hourly earning of $27, let's say somebody making roughly $28 an hour, okay? The PI ratio, okay, which is the prior to income ratio, which is very important to look at when we are comparing the home prices versus to what people are making in an hourly basis, it's really off chart. I mean, right now people cannot afford it. Even it's actually even the figuring it has been even since the Great Recession, okay, it was only a 14, almost 15, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, PPI ratio. I mean, we are over by 16 PI ratio. Again, I'm sharing all this article. Don't worry if you want to read the details, but I'm sharing this because this is really, really important. And I really think that even, you know, Jeremy Powell said it, that there was going to be a difficult housing correction. They knew because they printed so much money with the stimulus and added billions of dollars to the house market and also the stock market, that now everything is crumbling down. Um, that inflation, that artificial money that was coming in, they have been holding back and now we're all paying the consequences, right? So um, some corrections coming, we're looking at stock market, we're looking at so many things. Uh, you know, the, here goes Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego, home values, each fell between four and 5% just in the month of July. Now remember that a lot of this articles that I'm picking up and trying to be very hand selected uh, because I wanted to come from the right source and share it with you, realize that we are backdated. So that means that we still have a lot of things coming after the month of July, which we're going to really see a huge reflection because as it is, I mean, there's been a lot of huge increases. Like I said, I know at least in the state of Florida, we look at 40, 50% increases and, you know, rents have been higher and it's making it very difficult. So again, I don't want to make a long episode and video out of this. If you um, listen to the audio, that's why I call it an episode because it is an audio too. And I'm making it available as a podcast for those who don't have the time to watch or prefer to not actually watch the video but you're more welcome to come as I'm sharing this article. So again, this is very, very concerning. I do see in the next, I would say 12 to 18 months, it already got started. So the collapse I already started as of June, July of 2022. I pretty much don't have a crystal ball, but I would say in the next 12, 18 months, I see a huge shift uh, and it's going downwards because we need the correction. People are not sustainable buying homes and we need home buyers. We need actual people, not just investors, inflating the pricing um, and making this a home rental nation, but actually regular people, folks that are buying, you know, they actually have a job, a job, actually buying a home for their families. So anyhow, I hope this information has been helpful. As always, I try with my best intentions to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off as try and make this <laughs> episode as sure as possible. Again, why the 22 housing market crash could be worse than 20, 2008. Um, again, like, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to spend hours sometimes uh, doing a lot of research and getting you the best information. Um, and it's nice to have some support back. There's been a lot of other videos that I have shared all the way from not only housing market, how can you cut on your taxes? What type of investments you can do? What's going on with the crypto and what's going on with the stock market? Because we all need to be savvy with our money. Remember, no one's going to take care of your money better than you. Anyhow, I've been seeing you in the next episode. Thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.